Hi, welcome to this uh, little video here in our home. And um, I've just received some new prints from uh, the lab and uh, it's time to renew the portfolio. The portfolio is something that is living. It's something that uh, has to keep on living with you and with your energy of how you want to present yourself and having yourself seen in the world. It's really a matter of uh, killing your darlings a lot of the time. And that means taking away pictures that you might actually really totally love and adore, but uh, they need to go because they have to make space for something that will create something bigger in your career, in your work, uh, in your profession, uh, so that clients actually get to see what you're actually going for right now and what you're actually proposing in terms of mainly in terms of engine, that's what a portfolio is really about. It's really presenting yourself, how you would like to be seen. It's not really about the technique because, I mean, if you get to the point of actually showing your portfolio to a client, let's face it, you actually have to have some kind of knowledge. You have to have something to have actually got in front of the client. But at this time, at this point, it's really a matter of you showing what, uh, how you would like to communicate with your client and uh, showing who you are, basically. So it's really stepping up and showing who you are. This is one of the reasons why I tried a few years ago to actually have a digital portfolio on an iPad, like many photographers, many of you out there actually do. And that didn't last very long because it was no fun for me. And I also realized that it was not very honoring of my work and honoring of my pictures. Of course, pictures look very good on an iPad, but to really see the true quality of your work and also to show the clients that you're putting all your efforts into your work and you're honoring your work, um, I prefer to have them printed in my uh, physical portfolio. And it's, you know, leather bound with my name on it and it's, it's heavy. And that weight is actually somehow a little bit of a mental weight that you're actually putting on your client saying, hey, this is my work. It's, you know, it's actually worth a lot. You're actually holding something great in your hands right now. So it's already preparing them for something that you're proud of and for something that you can stand for. And that's also why it cannot be something that uh, is just there for years on end and you just keep on adding pictures at the end of your portfolio. Instead, what I'm going to show you now is the process where I take out every single picture from the, from the portfolio and uh, some of the pictures were actually be kicked out uh, of the portfolio, making space for a brand new one. I have some pictures from uh, some shoots that I did recently that I got printed. I'm really, really excited and happy to have them in portfolio now. And things might actually change. Things will not show up the way that I think. And that's also what I'm trying to invite you to is to really work with what feels fun for you right when you're doing the portfolio. One little tip is actually to ask your portfolio, you know, how can you contribute to my career, to my profession, to my business and me and my life and how can you contribute today? Let it guide you, let the pictures guide you into what actually wants to be seen, what wants to be shown to your clients in order to bring in more clients, more work, more money and of course much more fun. So um, let's start in this process. I'll just show you very quickly, it's just pages that you can actually remove or add uh, as you wish so that it it has the, the right amount of pages uh, for the presentation so you don't leave any empty pages. And it's trying not to pack it too much. You don't want to show too many pictures. Um, and that's the difficult part. You want to keep everything, you want to show everything that you're proud of, but some things really have to go out. I try and be as honoring as possible towards my work, towards my pictures. Uh, in terms of the camera that I use, in terms of the lighting that I use, how I set my lighting, how I present my work to my clients, how I print my pictures, all of these things have to be as honoring as possible. Because if you honor your work, if you honor your pictures, then you can start having a relationship with your business, with your photography, with your pictures, and they can contribute back to you. It has to be a give and take. Do not forget that images are actual entities. An entity, the definition of an entity, according to the dictionary, I actually saw this last night. An entity is actually a living being with or without body. That's interesting. That's according to the dictionary. 
uh, which really shows how a picture is an entity, since it's, you know, it's a living thing, since it's made of anything that exists is a living thing, since it's got an energy. If you don't believe me, read a fantastic book that I keep on recommending to everybody, and it's Big Magic. A uh, fantastic book that talks about ideas, but you can apply that to pictures as well. They work in exactly the same way. So what I've done now is to actually have marked certain uh, of the pictures that I think might actually be, you know, killing my darlings. Like this picture that I shot for uh, Swedish fashion designer Lars Schwelin. I love this picture, but somehow it feels, you know, outdated for me. It doesn't really uh, tick for me. Uh, this, which is one of my favorites, which is actually behind me here on the, on the wall at home. And it's really one of my favorite pictures of all times, but somehow it does not work in my portfolio right now. This one again. Uh, this one is also one of my favorite pictures, but it's probably gonna go. Anyway, we're gonna go through all these things. And um, I have here some pictures that just came from the lab. I have not seen them yet. And I love these C prints, in other words, chemical prints that are done by Pro Center here in Stockholm. And, uh, oh, the quality is amazing. What I'll do now, the process is basically to go through all these pictures and actually put them down on the floor uh, in no particular order and, um, and just let them live their own life and we'll be, I'll be following the energy and see what works. And also the thing with the portfolio is that it has to follow uh, not a storyline as such, but somehow it has to be like when you watch a film, you know, when you watch a film, it has, or when you listen to some music, it's the same thing. It starts in a way, then it has a little crescendo, then it goes down a little bit more, and then it finishes either with a massive crescendo or with something that just goes like, you know, whispering it away, uh, whispering it down or another way. And, um, and it's the same thing. It's that kind of energy that you have to play with your, with your portfolio. Your portfolio has to be the symphony that represents you, that represents your work, how you want to be seen and how you want to be heard with your clients. So listen to it or think of it as a piece of music that you're actually writing with your pictures. Let's get to work. Okay, the first part now is to actually kill my darlings. So go through the portfolio basically and uh, actually take out all the pictures because I'm going to leave this front page. It actually says my name and then it says shape is light, light as such. And I'll just remove the pictures. This one is going to stay. I'm just going to make a pile of right and left pages. Oh, this one is going to be removed. It doesn't work anymore. One of those darlings that are being killed. The large violin picture that is also being killed. Oh. My beautiful one that actually has to go. Bye bye. And do it like that. Thank you very much for contributing. And now it's time to say bye bye. This one, it wants to stay, so it's going to stay. And we'll see in which order. This one is going to go. It feels really old. This one is staying. It's still a very cool campaign, so I'm going to keep that in. As I said before, all these prints are chemical prints. They're not inkjet prints. And uh, you really feel a totally different quality. And also the lifespan of these pictures is much longer, so the value of the actual prints uh, remains. This beautiful picture, unfortunately, has to go now. This one, too. And try not to put, uh, you know, sentimental value in your pictures as such. They have their own life after you've shot them. So, I mean, this picture I actually gave as a print to my wonderful wife when we first met. And uh, so there is sentimental value attached to that in different ways, but it does not work in the portfolio, so it just has to go. And these ones still stay. And really try not to go into your head about what works and what doesn't work. So sometimes some pictures pop up and they want to be in, just as much as some pictures want to be taken out, although you love them that much. So if you go in your head, you'll be stuck and you will not be creating anything more. 
Um, and some pictures like this one, for instance, are really screaming at you that they really want to contribute. Uh, and it's not because, you know, it's well taken and it's uh, a nice big campaign for cosmetics or whatever. It's not that. It's really that the energy of the picture itself wants to carry on contributing even in the new portfolio that you're creating. And for all of you out there that are still doing iPad digital portfolios or that you're just relying on your website as your portfolio, think again. How do you think your client will react? Where do you think your client will be attracted to? Even if the other photographer showing digital pictures or a digital portfolio has amazing pictures, I can guarantee you that really showing the pride in your work and you know how much you care about your work and how much you honor it will actually be telling your client who you will be honoring of the pictures you will be taking for them. And after that, there is another process which I will explain more in depth, which is actually rearranging the pictures to create this kind of storyline that I was telling you about of creating a certain flow, a certain energy with the pictures and how they want to be presented, how they want to be seen. In other words, which one wants to open your book, which one wants to close your book, which ones want to follow, and, and how they want to play with each other. And uh, do not go into this one, for instance. I, I know that I killed it, but this one I actually will put aside because this one might come back in. I'm not quite 100% sure, so I'll, put, I'll make a separate little pile just for this picture. And also, in the back of your portfolio, make sure that you always have some of your business cards. But uh, what I normally do, that's the reason why I have different copies of the portfolio, is that one is my personal portfolio that I will be presenting to clients when I actually meet them in person. And then there's other copies for different agents or managers. And I give it to them as I've put it together. But then they will, I know that they will rearrange it and they might actually ask for other pictures that I actually put in my kill darlings and they want to bring them back in and work with them because maybe they work in their market in that part of the world or whatever other reason they might have. Good, so having done that and I'll start putting the pictures on the floor. Great, when you've done this job, then you want to have a starting point and a finishing point so you have your storyline. Um, so the order basically of the pictures in the portfolio. And um, in this case, I'm actually going to start from the top where I started before, and I'm gonna carry on in the same order so that that will be the sequence of the pictures in the actual book. So I'll start by changing this, this is going to go somewhere else. So I'm actually starting the portfolio with two brand new, brand new pictures just received from the lab. So that's my beginning. And I'm starting with the double page because the first page, as you know, is the page with my name on it. Now, following that, these two do not want to be in yet. And I will try and keep a balance of, you know, high key and low key pictures. So there's a balance of it so I don't put everything in the same place, but that might change again because that has to do with the, with the tune, with the melody that you're creating with your portfolio. So these two I get want to be somewhere else. And I will put them here just so that I know where they are. So I'm starting and there is a subliminal message in this but I'm actually starting with fashion and beauty. The first double page is fashion and beauty created out of the same shot, basically. Then I'm carrying on with beauty portrait. And then somehow would like to continue with that story, the phase one, so this one gets put aside. Somehow that last picture of that series, that third picture of the series, would be 
boring, both me and the client, although it's beautiful and it's going to stay in the portfolio. But something else wants to be there. And I guess one of these two, maybe carry on. Yeah, brighten it up a little bit more. This wants to be in now. And it's still part of the series, so it's not actually... You know, I'm prepared to contradict myself, so still the same series, but somehow, because of there's this flow of focus on the right page, then left page, then right page again, there's a flow going, and it's bright, very dark, somewhere in between, and then we'll see how it continues from there. But this one has to be moved. And I keep on looking at this pile that I'm creating here to see if anything of this wants to come in already now. And I'm getting, no, not yet. And don't forget that when a client opens a portfolio, this is a picture, the picture on the right is always the first one they see. And this doesn't really work for me because the focus is on this one, but she's actually walking away out of the picture. So it's actually distracting the attention. It's just a matter of the energy. And here instead, the first focus is there and the way that she's facing is actually bringing the client's eyes into the left page. So that works really well. And it's nice with splashes of color. So although there is a lot of darkness, there's a lot of splashes of color coming to that part of the portfolio. And really, I mean, it is a work of energy. Really following the energy of the pictures. And this all of a sudden works. And this all of a sudden works too. You see there's a natural flow into it. You can't really explain why, but, and all of a sudden these get moved somewhere else. These two want to come in now and play and lift up the whole situation. You get some pictures that are quite cheeky. First they come in and say, hey, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. And they like, they like impatience. <laughs> and then you have to ask them, okay, I know you're going to play, you are going to play, but you want to play right now, here. And they go, oh no, maybe a little bit later. And here, these two are a much bigger contribution because they're lifting it up. It's a mixture of high key, low key, bring them into this one, perfect. I'm gonna keep the high key going, so this beauty is going to wait for a while. I actually thought, I was convinced this picture would come in earlier, but somehow it didn't. Okay, this is one of those high notes that are gonna come in a little bit later on. From that, I can actually go into these that I put up here. Still very nice and bright. Keeping it going. That's very good. And then from here I carry on with this one. It's a natural follow-up. Does this work better? For now, I might change it again. And now. That works. And I'm mixing, you know, going from beauty to fashion to underwear to all of these different things. And, uh, and jumping totally irrationally from an underwear picture to this, which is part of the Cadillac campaign again. And that somehow feels good. And these two all of a sudden seem to be playing well together. Yes, because as I said, the eye of the client falls on this side 
and it's not really going anywhere. But somehow you've got this, which is a little touch of drama, beauty, low key, which, you know what it brings me to? This. And that works perfectly. So then I'm going from that beauty to another beauty campaign, cosmetics campaign, coming right after it. And it's, it's high key, but it works very well. And, and after this, I go on to... Oh, I'm sure that there's more darlings being killed. We'll see. I'm turning back. This would actually go very nicely before those two to close the beauty. Follow up. And there and here and here and that works well. And there. So next what I'll do is then actually count the pages. What I have now and count how many pages I have in the actual physical portfolio to see if all this actually has space or if I need to kill more darlings. Sixty-eight, seventy-one. Ha! Okay, that's good. They will fit and I might have to slim the portfolio, which is actually very good news. And let's see when I'm actually putting the pictures in, and I will put them in this order now. I'll just have a quick look again, and I will see if that one all of a sudden wants to pop in or not. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm actually looking in the portfolio now and really going with the energy. What I'm going to do now is that uh, this actually works for now. Um, feels good, but I want to let it breathe. And um, I'm gonna let it lie down for a few minutes and then uh, see if it still feels the same when I get back to it. I just wanna let it rest so the pictures can actually talk to each other and I know I sound crazy, <laughs> but they have to see if they want to, I mean, they go to live next to each other, you know? It's like putting roommates or flatmates next to each other. They have to start getting along, you know, have a coffee or whatever and, uh, and see if they get along in that order in the bedrooms that they want to be in, in my book. So um, let's give it a couple of minutes. So I let the portfolio breathe a little bit and get some space and me too. And I noticed a couple of things that um, want to be changed. The first one is uh, the opening of the portfolio that it, that is uh, a little bit too much of a, a crescendo too fast. So it's nice to intrigue people a little bit more and to play with that uh, energy. So I'm actually going to shift uh, a couple of pictures there, I'll show you how in a minute. And the other one is that something that was removed from the first selection is actually being put back in. And he said another picture that was in is being killed as a poor little darling. But uh, anyway, let's start with this. So I'll move this first selection further down a bit. So this doesn't get changed in that way, this sequence, because it still works well as I explained it before. What will happen instead is that from the first spread, I actually put in the pictures from the castle. And this, all of a sudden, you see that it plays. Let me just have a look at it one more time. And what I might want to do, I, oh, this order is getting reversed. You see, you have to keep it fluid. That wants to go there instead. And, and you see, it really is like a symphony of colors and shapes. So it goes a big opening, like, you know, symbols coming in, flashing, that. And then it goes into that, which is the mystery, and carries on with drama. Goes into this and plays with this nice swing of double pages. From that, it goes on to that, carries on there. And that still works. This works beautifully. That against that, does it work? You just put them 
closer to each other. It's a contrast, but it does work. Yes, actually, that works very nicely. And that still works, that still works, that still works. Very good. And there it still works. And here comes this change that I made. Basically, this is the darling that I'm kidding. I love this picture, lit with a hard box, very hard light. Um, she looks great and everything works in this picture. But for now, at least, I'm going to kill it. And I've put this one in that I had killed before and switch that. So the closing of the portfolio goes from that, those beauty shots of the Japanese style, onto the punk beauty shot, which was shot for a makeup store, then onto these shot in China, and then closing with these two. There were actually two different shoots, but they actually play well together. This similar feeling, and then closing with this, which is like a low bass tone. So um, that's... Uh, pretty much what it looks like right now. And uh, what I will do now is that I will uh, put all these pictures in the portfolio, uh, being careful with them, and uh, place them exactly in this order, and look at them once they're actually in the portfolio. Hopefully they will feel as yummy as they do now. And uh, we'll talk again in just a second. Actually, Wait, something just came up. This one that before wanted to be put aside, as you remember, it actually wants to come in here. Ha! Huh. And allow it to come in when it wants to come in. I know this looks like a really crazy way of doing your portfolio. Trust me, it works. Yes. Yes, it's, it's like a little like a little interlude between that and going into the underwear and very dramatic and then going with the humor and then, yes. Now it works. Great, so now we've done the task of um, putting the pictures, uh, the prints in the portfolio and uh, I have not flipped through it yet. So I'm just going to flip through it. I think it feels good. And uh, well, I'll have a look at it now. I love this opening. That was actually a great choice. It keeps it going. Nice change. This works so far. It's pretty cool because it's totally irrational in the way that it's put together. And it's a totally different way of doing it. And what it really is, is it's about me. I mean, I do fashion, I do beauty, I do cars. The only thing that is not here is my food, but that is a separate portfolio. And uh, I do hard light, I do soft light, I do, I do pretty much all sorts of different things. And that's really what, what feels very light for me. And they kind of follow a certain flow. And of course this, I'll have to let it rest overnight and look at it again tomorrow. And if necessary, make more changes, but it kind of works. Or rather, it doesn't kind of work, it works. I'm closing with this. I'm going to have to remain, uh, remove these actual physical pages so that we close with this and end up on the, that without any extra pages. I'll do that later on. Just want to flip through it one more time. And this time I flip through it really fast just to get the, without looking at the pictures, just getting tones.
Right, well, I'm done with uh, putting together my new portfolio and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it uh, inspired you to create your own portfolio. And um, I'm just, I mean, it's only my suggestion for you to actually print it in this heavy format. It actually weighs quite a bit. And, you know, if you can get a nice leather bounding with your name um, printed uh, on it, that is even cooler. And you have a nice case for it, so it's a nice presentation. It actually shows that you care about your pictures, that you are careful with your pictures, and that you actually honor your pictures. And um, I'm super happy with this. And if you choose instead to do it in a digital way, at least you've learned the process of how to actually put them in a certain order and really keeping the pictures that work for you right there and then. And keep this moving, keep this uh, as a living, it has to be a living document, your portfolio, it has to be something living that uh, changes all the time. So if you feel that uh, you've been showing the same portfolio for quite some time, maybe it's time to actually throw everything out and put it back together and see what shows up and what really wants to stay in there without going in your head about what actually, what pictures you like, what pictures you're fond of or any of that. I really see which pictures are going to contribute to your work and to bring in more clients and especially the clients that you would like to work with. And um, in my case, I'm going with for clients that would be fun to work with, that um, of course money is good. So I'm trying to attract also clients that don't have uh, a problem with money. And I'm trying to also attract clients that uh, really understand how I work, uh, which is a totally irrational way, but that creates more and with what I have to offer to my clients. So see what you can offer to your clients, what you have to come up with and try and put up your portfolio, put together your portfolio in a way that reflects you and your energy without going into how it should actually be done. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoyed these little tools that I gave you to to create a really nice and yummy portfolio that feels nice for you. And when you stop being yummy, change it. It's just a choice. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.